It's your favorite grandson, Jake. And uh, I wanted to share a story that I remember about the ranch. I remember when we were young, many times going to the ranch around Christmas time and cutting down a Christmas tree and bringing it home. And I always remember the ranch Christmas trees because they looked way different than the ones that we bought at the store. I remember a couple of times getting Uncle Mike Christensen's snowmobiles and riding those up to the ranch and then cutting down a tree and pulling it back on a sled to where the trucks were parked. That was always lots of fun. I do remember as well one time we built a sledding run on the hill adjacent or across from the cabin up behind the corral there the way it used to be and I remember we got that thing packed down pretty hard and we were sliding and and we built some jumps on that thing I think there was a little trail that used to go up the side of the hill there so we would build a jump and jump off that trail and uh, it was it was a lot of fun I also remember lots of times, Grandpa, you and, and Grandma and everyone being so accommodating and having us up to the ranch, either to, you know, Easter Rock or the Brownlee Pasture or even all the way up to the ranch and riding horses. When I was a young child, I remember Duke and Bishop and Buzz and Amos. And uh, I remember looking up at Amos in particular and he being such a big, tall horse and being just a little bit intimidated by that. I remember riding behind you once, Grandpa. I think it must have been on Buzz. I don't remember for sure, but I was riding behind you, and we were really just kind of walking away from the cabin. I don't know what we were going to do, but Buzz got a little bit jumpy and kind of bucked and, and rolled me off the back. So that was the one buck-off story that I remember. Nobody got hurt on that deal, but it was uh, always fun to ride with you and to be at the ranch. You always felt made us feel really comfortable. The other thing I always remember, Grandpa, and I, I, I think of you every time I go to the store and see a Fig Newton. I remember you always had Fig Newtons in your lunch or in your saddlebags. And to this day, I think they're gross, but they do remind me of you. I love you a bunch, Grandpa. We'll see you soon. Bye. I'm Aiden Keeper and I am 18. I'm Tate Jacob and I am 16. I'm Marin Lisa Christensen and I'm 13. I'm Sadie Carmen and I'm 12. I'm Kale Jacob D and I am 8. I'm Michael and Meg Christensen. Uh, how old are you? Bye. Three. You're three, Mike. No, five. <laughs> <laughs>
There was no place I loved more than the Lazy R. The thing I liked best about the Lazy R was taking the horses on long rides with my siblings and cousins. We all had our favorites. There was Buzz, Amos, Charlie Brown, Chassie, Tiger, Joe, Cloud, and Bishop. But I remember when I was about seven or eight years old, my favorite was a horse named Duke. I liked Duke because he was about four times my age at that point in time, and I didn't ever have to worry about him bucking me off. That was also about the age our parents uh, gave in to our begging and deemed that my twin brother and I were old enough to go on our cousins uh, on a ride by ourselves, our more mature cousins, who at that time were probably like 10 or 11 years old. Now, I was a tender little guy, and I was positive that if I ever got lost, I would surely end up being eaten by some wild animal. But I wanted to go so bad that I wasn't about ready to admit my fear. So it was on one of these rides that I remember first learning about the principle of hope. I somehow got separated from my cousins who were much more familiar with the ranch. And we must have been miles away from the barn at that point. My heart raced as I rode aimlessly for what seemed like forever. But it was probably only a few minutes. And my mind was filled with thoughts of being a tasty meal for a mountain lion or a bear or some other animal. So just as I was about ready to get off my horse and sit down on a stump and probably start crying, I remembered a couple things that my grandpa had taught me. Stay on your horse, he said. If you get really lost and don't have any idea which way to go, give the horse the reins and he'll take you back to the barn. I couldn't imagine that Duke actually knew the way home, but hope was restored as I thought about these words that grandpa had taught me. I decided to give it a shot. I draped the, uh, the reins over the saddle horn and let Duke go where he would. Sure enough, not much more than an hour later, we were back at the barn and I was a very relieved little boy. That was my first experience of having despair replaced with hope. All right, so then I go on and I give the rest of the talk about hope and how we can always have hope, especially in Jesus Christ. But that was the first part of my talk about uh, knowing what hope was from that experience with Duke. Well, love you, Grandpa. Hope you enjoyed that story. Bye. <laughs>
All right. Well, that's us. Thanks, Grandpa. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Hi, Grandpa. Happy birthday. Sure is fun to get to talk to you on your birthday. I'm going to share a couple stories that I remember about um, your house and the ranch. And of course, they are about a few of my favorite things. One is um, swimming. I used to love to swim in the creek. Even when I was older, we would swim in the creek either by your house or the one up at the ranch. And I can still remember grandma taking us in her little yellow pickup up to the flume and we would ride on inner tubes or whatever we could find down to your house and we loved that. And also, and also I can remember um, up at the ranch we would, there was a little bit of a waterfall that kind of came down some rocks a little bit um, up from where the cabin is. And we would slide down those rocks on our swimsuits, probably ruin them about half the time, but I really loved that. Also, I remember we always loved to ride bikes um, up and down from the ranch. And we used to think it was so much fun, but I can still remember being a little bit scared of that really sharp turn right after you come over the big hill. Um, also, I can remember sledding a lot at the ranch and by your house, and I love sledding. I still like to sled. I take my kids sledding all the time. And uh, I can remember you taking your tractor out and smoothing down that hill kind of right down behind where Brian's house is now so that we could ride our sleds down the hill. And that was so much fun. I can remember you out there on the tractor in the summertime making the hill nice and smooth so we could sled down it. But most of all, what I remember is just you letting us help all the time, whether you were doing the cows or feeding or bailing or riding horses. You just always let us help and be by you. And I really appreciate that. We probably weren't a lot of help a lot of the time, but it was so much fun to be with you and just to have all those experiences to be by you as you were working. Thanks, Grandpa. I love you. So <clears throat> I've got a couple of memories of Grandpa Moses um, regarding him and horses, kind of as a general theme, but also just as a, kind of a couple of other things that aren't necessarily to do with horses. I had a hard time narrowing it down. So Grandpa, when you watch this, sorry if this gets a little rambly, but I've got a lot of fun memories that I wanted to talk about. So maybe this will be kind of long, um, but uh, you know that's okay with me. So the first one, and this is kind of a horse one, is uh, we were up at the Lazy R one day and Malie was riding a horse and she was never very confident on horses. She always was a little bit scared. But uh, one of the horses kind of took off running on her and then stopped short and dumped her off onto a bike, like a bicycle that was sitting there parked on the, on the side of the road, I guess. And anyway, Malie fell off the horse onto the bike and skinned herself up and got hurt and whatever else. And I remember that grandpa was really mad at that horse and he got a hold of a stick and I thought he was gonna go, I thought he was gonna go kill that horse. Um, it was a little scary, but also it was really cool to see that um, no horse was gonna hurt his granddaughter and he was really protective of us and making sure that that darn horse knew who was boss messing with his grandkids. So I thought that was a pretty cool memory. Another thing I always remember about grandpa was just riding out through the, the hills and the pasture and in the 
in the different places we would go to either round up the cows or move the cows or whatever else we would always be on horseback and out there and he would teach us fun little cool things along the way you know and one of the things that he taught was that you always let the head man ride in front so uh if if we ever started riding in front of grandpa he'd give you the eye you know like what are you doing so then we'd, we'd get back behind him real quick um and then we always wanted to know for some reason we were kids you know we wanted to know how soon till we ate lunch or till we stopped or till we had a you know we got we got to have a break Grandpa had this thing that he would do where he would try to trick us into thinking that he could tell time by just looking up at the sun. So I didn't know it at the time, I know now, but at the time I didn't know. He had a watch on his wrist, um, but it was kind of covered up by his sleeve a little bit. So he'd kind of hold his hold his uh, his hand down here close to his waist, you know, and then he'd look up at the sun and then kind of look down like he was thinking about it, but really he was looking at his watch but he would pretend to just kind of be thinking about it. And he'd look up at the sun again and look down again. And he'd say, oh, it's 1030. And we all thought, wow, grandpa can tell time just by looking at the sun. Whatever, he was looking at his watch the whole time, the big cheater. <laughs> all right, the last one. Um, I have a lot of really special memories with grandpa, of course, cutting firewood that I used to, to sell and make money for my mission. He He gave of his own time to be up there with me and make sure that I knew where to go to cut and, and he helped me cut and also um, just made sure that I had somebody with me to be safe. And I mean, I, I'll never forget his giving of his time in that way to me. Anyhow, he, he would go sit under a tree at two o'clock every day when we were up there working. and. He, he said that at his age, which at that, you know, time was what, maybe 60 something. Anyway, he said at his age, two o'clock was his quitting time. So he would, he would go over there and sit under a tree at two o'clock while I worked the rest of the day. And, and he thought he was pretty cool. I thought he was pretty cool too. And I was jealous that he got to quit by two when I had to quit, keep working. There's a million other things I could talk about. Um, one was I left the emergency brake off on his uh, little tan Ford Ranger pickup one time, and it it uh, rolled down the hill, not end over end, but it, you know, on the wheels, rolled down the hill and ran into a bush. And he could have been really mad about that, but he never even yelled at me once, and I was really grateful for that because it was a dumb mistake on my part. I love how Grandpa would always tell us to go places to find fences to fix that only he could find, really. Like I. Even Brian, who had a ton of experience up at the ranch, couldn't find some of these places or roads that Grandpa would talk about. It was, it was always an adventure to go find this little spot near the Hoochie, just past the whatchamacallit, right on the doodad that Grandpa wanted you to find. So, um, Grandpa Moses is a huge part of who I am today. Both him and, and Grandma Moses are huge parts of who I am today. The values that I hold, the content of my character, and... <clears throat> And I will love them both forever. So thanks very much. Hope you liked my video. Um, talk to you later. Bye. stories I want to tell about horses on the ranch. The first one that comes to my mind though is when you first gave me Jewel, I remember that she was super crazy and she always bucked, but I remember Uncle Roy riding her one time and she was bucking and he did a front flip off the front of her and landed on his feet with the reins still in his hands. I was absolutely amazed. And 
I remember writing Cody when I was really, really little and you teaching me how to eat air sandwiches when we got hungry. I also remember when you guys first got Jack, I thought he was such a pretty horse and I wanted to ride Jack because he looked like Tux. And when I was little, I really liked Tux, but he was also kind of a crazy horse. Anyway, I remember I tried to ride Jack and he was too much for me to handle. So I think I ended up on Cody or Socks while you rode Jack. I just love going to the ranch and it has all of my most peaceful and happy memories. And riding Jewel straight up the side of a mountain is still my most favorite thing to do even though she's gone. Thanks for leaving such a legacy and having an awesome ranch for us.